What's your favourite idea? Mine is being creative. <sighs> Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new YG album, still, still brazy. YG, according to my notes, is a California rapper. He's now following up his breakout 2014 album, My Crazy Life. I liked it. I thought it was a decent record, but uh, everything I liked about the album didn't seem to directly have anything to do with YG. There were great features on this thing. I was really impressed with a few of the hooks. Really liked DJ Mustard's funky, bassy, synthetic production. When I didn't enjoy the album, it was really because of all the sketches that padded the record out, though I liked that the album was trying to be conceptual. It was kind of a short LP to be incorporating so many uh, little sketches. And YG himself uh, didn't really bring much to the table in terms of flow or memorable lines. It's really only the potential of my crazy life that actually had me semi-interested in listening to this new album. That and I thought the teaser singles were okay. Uh, tracks like, why you always hate? And the song uh, FDT, which stands for Fuck Donald <laughs> Trump. Hey, fuck Donald Trump. Tracks that are super simple, super blunt, a little goofy in their directness. Maybe a little overly simplified, but I actually thought these tracks were pretty catchy, uh, fun. And I could tell that YG was making a serious effort to try to address uh, a bit of an elephant in the room when it comes to music that has social issues weaved into it. I mean, even, you know, King Kendrick Lamar isn't like dropping anti-Donald Trump songs. A lot of rappers aren't, in fact. Another thing I liked about these two tracks is that they kind of had this a throwback flavor to the instrumentals. In regards to the production on this thing, uh, no DJ Mustard to be seen, uh, unfortunately, but the production on this thing is incredibly good anyway, and pulls from that old school G-Funk sound, which I think uh, is, is sort of necessary in this era of music where revivalism in hip hop is so popular. I mean, this decade so far has brought a myriad of different artists from the East Coast who are bringing back that boom bap vibe, but we haven't seen that same sort of rush of artists from the West Coast kind of reliving that G-Funk sound. I think putting out a record with a sound like this is a smart move on YG's part, especially in the wake of movies like Straight Outta Compton. Clearly people have nostalgia for this era in rap history, and nobody's really feeding it. Even Dr. Dre himself with his new Compton soundtrack, uh, he kept it really contemporary here. And even though I applaud YG uh, on this, uh, sometimes, I wonder if he sort of lacks the self-awareness to do a record like this. I mean, he does have one bar on here where he says uh, he's like the only rapper to make it out of the West without Dre. Uh, for one, not true. But also, uh, even though Dr. Dre isn't coming out directly and co-signing you, uh, you are kind of riding on a sound that he helped popularize. Regardless though, uh, YG does bring to this sound lots of memorable hooks, topical song subjects, some catchy flows, some good features, longer song lengths, because this project certainly feels more meaty and structured than My Crazy Life. He doesn't really go overboard on the skits either. A lot of them are pretty short. They don't affect the flow of the album. The entire project kicks off with the very grimy, smooth, and eerie Don't Come to LA. I'm way more impressed with YG's delivery on this one. I think he's got way more conviction, better breath control, and he says every word as if he means it. Uh, prior, he would occasionally kind of mumble words together into a series of bars that really weren't all that coherent coherent, uh, and whether you could tell what he was saying or not, it didn't really demand your attention. And I'm just loving that this song not only does a good job of setting the tone for the record, but it's also a very smooth and mean tribute to the area that he's from. Uh, AD's feature on this track, too, is really over the top and insane. We have the song Who Shot Me, uh, which I thought was really cool, not only because of the way that YG really brings the narrative out on this track and, and delves into these themes of betrayal and paranoia. I love the line on here where he talks about uh, his grandma's praying for him and it helped him because things could have been worse. He's talking pictures on a shirt. And the beat kind of reminds me of something that would have been produced by Dr. Dre on like one of Eminem's first couple of records. And YG even seems to pull 
from that influence a little bit too as he acts in character of the people who he seems to be rapping about uh, on this album occasionally. Like on the song Gimme Got Shot where he's rapping about all of his friends who now that he's kind of made it in hip-hop are sort of looking for a handout. Love the song Twist My Fingers. Uh, obviously very strong gangster rap vibes coming through on this track. He talks about other rappers putting Compton on the map, but he says he's putting Bompton on the map. He's representing Compton not only as someone who lives there, but as somebody who is a blood from Compton. He talks about other rappers pretending to be bloods, and uh, in a couple bars here, says that you know he's gonna confront them in the club. And, uh, and, uh, and. But what I like about this song the most is not only the very sticky hook, but also just the vibe of the instrumental and the song itself. It kind of feels like uh, some old school Snoop Dogg, like the song Who Am I? Everything from the uh, very bouncy synth bass line to the talk box vocals laced into the beat. Call back again to that 90s Cali G-Funk era. We have the song Bool, Bomb, and Blective, which is kind of a sequel to Bick and Back Bamboo from his last record. Obviously being a blood, he is, is not saying some of these C words, because, you know, that crip rivalry. He is kind of taking the same song concept, but actually fleshing it out into something that's a little meatier and more memorable. It's nice that YG is revisiting these ideas and actually giving them the attention, giving them the song length, and giving them the song structure uh, that they deserved all along. And again, on this track, we see YG rapping about how he is bull, bomb, and collective. He's not really breaking a sweat in the face of pressure, not allowing himself to get sucked into unnecessary conflict. Probably the album's best piece of unintentional advice. But when YG starts giving advice on the record, uh, may maybe it's in a way that some people are really gonna take to it, uh, like on the song She Wish She Was, which some people uh, will probably hear and just call the song blatantly sexist. But I don't see the song so much as like, women need to act this way and men need to act this way. Uh, to me, the track is more of a cautionary tale in a way where YG is warning that women not get into what he paints as a gangsta lifestyle. But we have uh, people like J305 on the track uh, unapologetically coming out and drawing gender lines on here, uh, talking about why women that sleep with a lot of guys are hoes. If themes of sexism trigger you, then you might just wanna sit this one out. We have the song Fuck Donald Trump again. Uh, at first, I kinda thought the song was pandering when I heard it as a single, but then as I gave it more listens, uh, not only did the track just read to me as fun and catchy, uh, and not only, in a sense, agreeable, I mean, it's not an incredibly thought-provoking track, uh, but I think it puts a statement bluntly that didn't really need to be anything else other than blunt. And it felt like the track was fueled by genuine feelings, especially as Nipsey Hussle came in and delivered a pretty awesome verse about how it's not the USA without the Mexicans that Donald Trump himself is demonizing in his campaign speeches. And it's in these last few moments on the record that YG actually gets consistently political. Uh, we have the song Blacks and Browns, which deals directly in relations between uh, blacks in California and Latinos in California talking about racism and jealousy, black on black crime, and instead preaching a message of unity. And we have the song Police Get Away With Murder, which not only has one of the most killer instrumentals on the entire record, really should have been earlier in the track listing because it is one of the better songs in the track list, though still, I guess it makes for a good finish. Not only does the song deal with police violence, but in detail it goes into uh, the way that YG and others may be protecting themselves against not only aggressors in their own neighborhood, but uh, aggressive police officers too, saying that, uh, you know, I sort of need to carry a gun on me for this reason. And he sort of uh, gives these reasons as he's pleading with a judge. It's just a solid set of politically charged tracks at the very end of this album. Uh, the only thing I could fault this record with is that sometimes it's not very poetic, you know, uh, but from this style of music, I expect bluntness. I expect the rapper to be to the point. You know, I can at least commend it though uh, for being super catchy, for being immediate, for being topical, and I can give it to YG for actually coming through with a, a set of flows and a delivery and bars that are actually worth paying attention to rather than just kind of simply tuning the rapper out and just listening to the beat, which is something that all too often uh, we're expected to do with a lot of new commercial rap releases today. There are a handful of tracks on here that I think are decent. 
I wouldn't take them out of the track listing or anything, but they do pale in comparison to others, whether it be because the beat is a little underwhelming or uh, because there's not as strong a subject matter like the song I Got a Question. A uh, little Wayne's verse on that track was okay. Uh, the song Word is Bond is all right. And still Brazy didn't really read to me as, as uh, one of the best tracks in the track listing, even though it is the title track here. All that being said, I was pleasantly surprised with this record, not only because it's far better and I think superior to My Crazy Life, uh, but also because I love this freaking thing. I think it's a great record. Uh, definitely one of the more impressive and, and memorable hip hop releases I've heard this year. I'm gonna have to give this thing a decent to strong eight. Tran. Zition. Yep, those are my thoughts on this new YG record over here. I hope uh, all y'all are enjoying it. And if you're not, that's fine too. Uh, let me know what you thought of this record. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. YG, still brazy forever.